I'm going to be rebuilding an NFL team here in a fantasy draft, but with a twist. I have to trade my best player at the start of every season. All right, let's spin the wheel, see what team we're going to start with here via this fantasy draft rebuild. And it's going to be the Detroit Lions. But obviously, no Jared Goff, no Jamison Williams, Aiden Hutchinson, nobody. We're going to see where the Lions end up picking. Okay, starting point is fantasy draft. I'd like for my team to actually pick high in the draft. I feel like every time I do a fantasy draft, I'm either at like 28 or 30, something in the back half of the first round. I don't know that I've ever really picked inside the top 10. But because the whole point of this video is trading our highest overall player at the start of every year, we can get good value for him, by the way. But we just have to trade him. The big thing I'm going to want here is a high pick and somebody that has immense trade value in year one. And we're at 25. Of course we are. Of course. So who is even available? Marlon Humphrey goes off the board. And we'd probably prefer a younger player with some value. So Aaron Donald's here, Zach Martin, Travis Kelsey in the 99 club, TJ Watt. It's going to be interesting to see who the CPU selects, but they're going to get traded as long as they end up being the highest overall player on the team, which in all likelihood they will be. I think the CPU does tend to favor the younger players in the fantasy draft. So it's not necessarily a given, especially considering where we're drafting. But we'll see. All right, let's see what we're working with. Okay, we have Anthony Richardson. Now, the reason that this has actually worked out pretty favorably for us is that Anthony Richardson's a pretty low overall, but should develop nicely. So there's a chance that we never have to go out and trade for a quarterback because he just might end up developing for us. Has looked very nice in real life, by the way. I'm playing fantasy football for the first time in like over a decade. And I wanted to make sure it was a dynasty league with quarterbacks being extremely valuable. So it would feel more like an NFL team to me. I think part of the reason I've avoided fantasy football in the past is it just, it just, I don't know. It, it didn't feel like real enough. And I know it's not supposed to be, it's just a fun thing, but I feel like fantasy football for a lot of people is just something to get you more interested. And I'm already interested. I have an entire job focused around football, but I'm trying out fantasy football. I got a dynasty league and I drafted Anthony Richardson and I think he's going to be the real deal, hopefully. So it, it's going to be nice with him. And we drafted TJ Watt. He's a 97 overall, and he will be traded. Should have a ton of value, though. Really, really valuable position. Young enough, super high overall, and great depth trait. So that's kind of perfect. And then like, Jamal Williams is an 85. <laughs> what? Okay. I, I don't know how they do overalls. But that just seems nuts. Jamal Williams, like... He's a nice short yardage goal line guy, but he's not the 15th best running back in the league. I know his touchdowns from last year. I don't care. I'm looking at skill set. And that's another reason I don't like fantasy football historically is I think it it goes too far away from what real life actually is. Like It leads to guys like Austin Eckler being valued over Justin Herbert, which just, I, I've seen it on TikTok. I, I do drafting a 17-0 team and I just randomly spin through teams and take a player. And I take Justin Herbert when I get the Chargers because obviously, and then half the TikTok little kids are just like, oh, Austin Eckler has left the chat. What is this meme? Anyway, ranted enough. I got to trade TJ Watt. Chandler Jones is there too. He's definitely going to get traded, but I have to trade TJ Watt because he's our highest overall player. I am forced to. We do have Laramie Tunsil, Ryan Rampcheck, building a pretty good offensive line. Mike on Wenu as well. So what does a trade package look like for just TJ Watt? <laughs> Aaron Jones, no. Don't want DeAndre Hopkins. DK Metcalf could be interesting. AJ Terrell could be interesting. Now, I'm kind of thinking that I need picks more than anything else. So if we're going to get a good player, I also want draft picks as well. Because if we have to trade our highest overall player every year, I don't want just one or two really high overalls. I want a bunch so that our team's going to be good pretty much regardless of our highest overall player. That's the, the mindset right now. Jalen Waddle and a first from the Giants. Jalen Waddle and the Giants, dude. I wanted that so bad. I, and he just didn't make it to their pick that year in 2020. 2020. 2021. No. 2020. Yeah, 2020. No, it was 2021 because this is year three. Okay, 2021. I knew it's year three. I'm like, oh, 2020, because 2020 plus three is 2023. Not how it works. But I'm actually, ooh, AJ Brown as well. I think I'm leaning toward Jalen Waddle here. We might end up having to trade him anyway if he becomes our highest overall player. But right now, if we can get Jalen Waddle 
plus a first round pick and then maybe even more than that, it's an absolute no brainer to make this happen. Okay, big time trade, TJ Watt, Chandler Jones, Zach Sealer, our entire defensive line pretty much. A third this year, two thirds actually this year, and a second in 2026 gets us Jalen Waddle, a first this year, next year, and the year after that, plus a second round pick this year. I think that's an exceptional trade for us, and that draft capital is going to be really nice for us in this rebuild as well. Next out the door, Jamal Williams, who I kind of crapped on a bit, but he's a nice player, just, you know, in, a, in his role. Nico Collins, by the way, what a start to the season he's had. He is an emerging star alongside C.J. Stroud. Decent player at Michigan, really starting to develop in the NFL. Nice player to look out for, even though he's he's had a couple big games already. And then defensively, we need to trade anybody else. Bobby Okereke, maybe. Xavier Howard is probably an age where it makes sense to trade him. Late 20s. So, oh, he's actually 30 now. It definitely makes sense to trade him. Now more than ever, we need to recoup some value. You know what? Jamal Williams can get us Kair Elam. I know it seems weird to go from an 85 overall player down to a 76. We are picking up a third, a fourth, and a seventh next year. Kind of whatever. But Kair Elam is only 22 years old. Star or better development. And won't be one of the highest overall players on our team for quite some time. And we need help at corner as well because I'm going to trade Xavier and Howard, who's 30. We need to get younger. And I've traded TJ Watt. Obviously, pretty big move. And we are not quite done yet. Gonna make a trade for another corner. Xavier Howard, Chuck Clark, Preston Smith gets us JC Horn and a fourth round pick this year. JC Horn, just 23 years old, already one of the better corners in the league. Our new highest overall corner as he teams back up with Dante Jackson, this time in a slightly different shade of blue. And now we have three very solid corners, but one of them's gonna be gone. It's Dante Jackson. Just gotta focus on getting younger right now. So we have more years to develop these guys. I think I'm gonna hold on to a Karake. Alex Anzalone's just not going to have very much trade value. I don't think Greg Gaines will either. We also have Trey Lance. Interesting. I mean, I'll try to trade him if I can. I don't want Preston Smith back, that's for sure. Aaron Browning, it's just never really been able to develop for me in these rebuilds. I've got him a couple of times. This has never really worked out. I know Deontay Johnson, but it just doesn't make sense. We already have four good receivers, and he's 27. Uh, this seems like a pretty good offer from the Jags. Kayvon Thibodeau in a fifth for Deontay Jackson, Andrews Pete, Trey Lance, and a third in 2025. Kayvon Thibodeau, I wish he had superstar development. Obviously, I'm a Giants fan. I'm a little bit biased, right? Even though I feel like I'm not. Uh, decent player so far, really just, I'm looking for him to break out. And I do want to start Jair Brown with that star dev. So I'll probably look to trade Justin Evans. And can I trade anybody else? Will Disley's going to have no value. We're not really looking to compete too much in year one. Just want to develop Anthony Richardson and these star receivers. Although we might have to trade one of them sooner rather than later. Got to remember that. You know what? Justin Evans, Nico Collins, and Will Disley gets to be Cole Strange. And I'm all about getting that Strange. So we're going to go ahead and get Cole in our offense. And maybe move him to, or Donald Parham to center. Donald. Dylan Parham. Sorry. D Donald Parham is the tight end for the Chargers. Dylan Parham is the offensive guard out of Memphis, right? Indeed. I'm just noticing that trade didn't go through. What? Okay, maybe I just didn't accept it properly the right time. Just did it again and... Nah, it's still not going through. I'm confused. It's just not working. All right, I guess we're not doing that. Maybe at the midseason mark, I'll be allowed to trade again. But it's not working right now. Always something. Let me hop into training camp, see if I can't get Anthony Richardson a quicker head start on his development. One in six at the midseason mark is not good, but it does make our pick a whole heck of a lot better. And we're, you know, we're trying to compete this year, but it's not going to be there for us this year. The team's just not good enough. We have a young, developing QB. And until the QB takes a big step up, we're probably just not going to be all that good. But I, as I outlined earlier, you know, I do think we're in a pretty good spot with Anthony Richardson. So we're going to go to week 11, set our focus scouting players and uh, try to build the rest of this team. I'm not going to make any trades at the trade deadline. Clearly, I just simulated past it. We're just going to rock out with what we have. We have talent. We just need a whole lot more of it. It's honestly kind of amazing how bad we were. 2-15. and 15, I don't really get it. We had the second to last ranked defense and offense. We had some good players on offense. We just didn't really pass the ball well at all. Anthony Richardson was 
so bad. Okay. Really, really, really bad. Does have 97 throw power now. But uh, threw 29 picks. Not what you want. We had no running game. And that might change in the draft. There's a decent running back prospect. Jalen Waddell did have over 1,000 yards receiving. And then Cody Barton led the team in tackles. Pretty much got no pressure at all. Yeah. Rough season. But, you know, it is what it is. We're going to move on. And we have to be prepared to trade our highest overall player. And that right now is Laramie Tunsil. He's playing down four overall, but is in the high 90s. So we're going to have to upgrade offensive line because Laramie Tunsil at the start of the next season is going to be moved. The Texans win the Super Bowl. Okay. Interesting. Oh, that's right. It's uh, a... <laughs> This is not the NFL. This is a fantasy draft. I was confused for a minute. But Patrick Mahomes wins MVP, so as much as things change, they still kind of remain the same with the Dolphins. And then B. John Robinson, Jack Campbell are your rookies of the year. I'm kind of confused with these contracts. You know, usually in fantasy draft land, you don't have to uh, re-sign anybody yet. Laramie Tunsil here is not on a long-term deal. Neither is Drake London. Kind of bizarre. And he doesn't really want to be here. Well, I think for Laramie Tunsil, since we're, we know we're going to be trading him, I don't really want to give him a big bonus at all. In fact, I'd probably just like to franchise tag him if possible. So I'll offer him a deal. But I not I don't want to pay a big bonus because I don't want to pay a big uh, cap penalty associated with that. So we're going to end up franchise tagging him. Now, Drake London is somebody I, I want to keep around long term. So I will offer him a five-year deal. He returns. Now we franchise tag Laramie Tunsil. And it's $18.8 It's really, really not bad at all. And uh, he'll be somebody that we trade. And free agency, I expect not to have anybody. We'll see if that changes, but I really expect free agency to be completely barren here in Fantasy Draft Franchise Year 1. And, I mean, Michael Pittman's actually here. Who would be good if we had to trade away one of our top receivers? That's interesting, but I still don't think we're going to do that. Not really a big interest in coming here. 31 teams are interested. Yeah, so we're not going to be one of them. I might try to sign Tommy Townsend, though. I will also say this draft class looks really, really nice. A bunch of really good players, and not even just at the top of the draft as well. But there seems to be good value down the board. I'm not sure if there are any, like, guaranteed bona fide studs. There is the running back that I like that I'll show you guys in a minute. Who looks pretty good. Has A, spin, and juke, which means he's going to be really, really high rated. Which is kind of like the thing that pushes that pushes me over the top if I was going to draft a running back. I think I'm going to. Ooh, top five talent round one to two. I was thinking about taking a corner at the very top of the draft just because he looks so good. But a top five talent... At the end of the first round, that's where we want to be. Okay. Elite speed and strength safety. He might be a freak. Reggie Randolph, that's an A-plus name as well. I don't know. We, uh, we are going to have some really, really tough decisions in this draft, which is a good thing because they're really good players. Also, this punter looks fantastic. Elite kick power and speed. And a kick accuracy. Generational punter? Like, honestly, maybe. NFL draft, we gotta trade down. We pick at number one. We have to trade down. Because there are too many good players for us to just stay at one and, and draft somebody. So I, I said I would mention the running back. I forgot to check out the mock draft. Which is annoying, but looks pretty good. Elite change of direction, obviously very fast as well, even though the speed only says good. Here's the thing. A juke move a spin move. He's going to be ridiculously high rated. I, I can't believe I forgot to check out the mock draft. It still feels incredible that you can't actually check the mock draft during the draft. It's so stupid to me, but that's where we are. Also, Reggie Randolph now looks generational. A hit power, a tackle, a zone coverage, elite speed. This might be the best safety I've ever seen in the draft. We have to find a way to draft him as well. And we can't pick at number one, is essentially what that comes down to. 
Bears offering multiple first round picks this year. That's what we want unless the Cardinals pick a little bit higher. But I don't think they do. I think it's going to be trading with the Bears. I hope we don't miss out on both of these players. It is still a really good draft class either way. But I think the Bears is going to be the team we trade with. It's going to be for sure. So we'll take six. We'll take 15. I'd like 47 and I'd like a first next year if possible. I just want to see how close this is going to be. And it's actually not too far. So is this the moment we should include Laramie Tunsil in the trade? How close does that get us? That's actually not too far. So let's let's add Laramie Tunsil and the number one overall pick, right? And then what else can I get? I'd like a player probably. Miles Garrett would be nice, but we'd have to trade him <laughs> as early as next season. Jalen Carter, that's going to be the guy. Oh, it's so close. This is going to be a great trade for us. Okay, that's going to be it. Larry Tunsil, Justin Evans, and Brian Edwards, as well as number one overall. For Jalen Carter, two first-round picks this year, first next year, and a second-round pick this year. I just do not want to miss out on some of these players. If we miss out on, let's say, the running back, I think that would be fine, to be honest, even though he's going to be very good. But the big question is going to be, where do we stop to trade up for the safety if we have to do that? I'm not going to risk these guys getting, you know, to you know, their actual projected draft spot. I'm going to take them before I think I have to. And I think that's going to start at number six. If the running back goes off the board, that's going to be fine. I think the safety is going to be the biggest thing because it's, it's way harder to find an amazing safety. But we are one pick away. And the Chargers take an outside linebacker. Do we pick the running back at number six here? That's the question. Yeah, I think we're going to. Eddie Dunn, 22 years old out of UCLA. He's got decent key ratings, but the big thing for him, elite change of direction, a juke, a spin. He's going to be very good as a result. Does have hidden dev. Decent athlete, 92 speed, 91 acceleration, 92 change of direction, 90 agility, all looking really nice. And we know his juke move is going to be really good as well. Now, with a juke move for a running back, that could mean 85, I think. It could also mean 99. Hopefully we get lucky and he's really, really, really good. And by that, I mean, you know, generational. Okay, number 18, Cody Barton. A third next year, a five next year, and a seven the year after that. Gets us the number seven overall pick here from the Patriots. And we're going to draft the safety. He looks incredible. I don't want to risk him getting drafted to anybody else. He's just way too good to pass on. 21 years old at a UCF. Asante Samuel, a senior, went to UCF. So, you know Maybe this is the next great DB to come out of that school. Mike Hughes was UCF. Am I missing anybody? It's possible. He was a first-round pick, Mike Hughes was, if I recall correctly. Elite speed, elite strength, and then A tackle, hit power, pursuit, awareness, and zone coverage. Going to be really, really good. Welcome to Detroit. 94 speed, only 87 acceleration, 91 agility. And we know the coverage and hit power is going to be really good. I think that is a stud. Reggie Randolph, welcome to the Lions. Also, Darnell Gerard looks pretty good. B catching, catching traffic, A deep route running, C release, elite speed and acceleration, A spectacular catch. Like his medium route running is terrible, but if he gets number 15, it's probably somebody we have to draft. And there's a good tackle here, Kasim Bo out of UCLA. This draft just has way too many players I want to draft. And I, I think if there's anyone we should pass on, it'll be the receiver because we're already strong at that position. But some of these tackles look fantastic. If they get to us, we got to make sure they don't get past us. There goes a really good looking guard, Evan Tyson out of Stanford. There goes a quarterback. And the Broncos take a defensive tackle. I think one that I thought looked pretty good. Maybe. Maybe. No, Donald Harris was the one I thought looked pretty good. B block shed, B finesse move, A power moves, only D tackle, skip the combine, but looks great down the board. I don't know, this just seems like the most stacked draft class I've ever seen. But maybe they're not as good as I think? I guess that's a possibility. I gotta not take the receiver, right? I know this might be unpopular. I'm gonna draft Kasim Bo here. Elite strength and change direction. He's got decent looking attributes as well. 
23 year old tackle and we need a tackle badly we just traded Laramie Tunsil and it's paying off already hidden development 93 strength good acceleration and speed I'm liking that draft choice already and then our next pick is not until the top of the second round if this receiver sticks on the board for a little bit I'll consider a trade up but there he goes at 18 I just I think it was better given our current roster to not go in that direction we just need too many other things top of the second round how do we approach this so we've, we've drafted a tackle i honestly wish i would have looked at marcus tyson he's got b run block only 21 years old a awareness athletically not amazing skills wise eh, leaves a bit to be desired probably still could be quite good i just don't know but this seems like the obvious choice just because he's best player available carry franks at a cues here a zone coverage could potentially play safety for us great speed and we i know we just drafted a safety but we could potentially even use another one hidden dev 93 speed 90 acceleration just best player available top five player in the draft you get him in the second round easy choice and we'll simulate to round two now some players we want could go off the board in this range hopefully they didn't because i think we're crushing it right now and I need that to continue. A lot of players that I like still on the board. A couple of good guards. Ben Moss, we should draft. I think we could probably get everybody here if we really wanted to. We have two second round picks, pretty much back to back. What would I rather get? I think Donald Harris is going to be number one. Skip the combine. Say, hey, Roger Goodell, up yours. Not doing your damn combine. Just 21 years old. Great speed. And A power moves. B block shit. A play rec. B finesse moves. The. Key ratings look like that of a top 10 pick in the draft. Just D tackle is terrible. Does have hidden dev, 85 strength, 76 speed. Seems pretty good to me. Vince Mulligan, elite acceleration, great agility, change of direction, elite jump and good speed, elite strength, and decent looking core attributes. Welcome to the team. More value on the offensive line. Hidden dev, 92 strength, 84 acceleration, we're just getting so good in this draft if these players are anywhere as good as i i feel like they could be based on you know the dev trait and their at least the attribute grades i think we're going to be so good so set up for the future and i think we're going to have to make a move up if we want ben moss and probably matthew whitaker as well whitaker also from arizona state two good arizona state guards well i wouldn't want to split them up so we might have to make a move up. So we probably should just pass on the defensive tackle because we just traded for Jalen Carter and then drafted one. But then Matthew Whitaker is supposed to go in about 50 picks. I'm not waiting that long. Trading three fours and a five to get a third round pick. And I'm just going to simulate to that pick and, and hope that the player we want is still available. It's not too far down the board, but it's far enough as, you know, to where trickery could happen. And hopefully players not off the board and he isn't Matthew Whitaker remains available welcome to Detroit as well only normal dev on him but we were due for one of those we were on such a great run and he still could be good right and he probably won't have to start right away either so kind of perfect and then in the sixth round if the punter is still available I'm going to draft a punter at uh, round six pick one and he looks like the best punter I've probably ever seen in the draft out of Stanford Ben Rosenberg Texas has a great punter that was a transfer from Stanford in real life so uh you know what good school for it <laughs> he does have hidden dev 99 kick power punter 80 speed this is a generational punter he probably has superstar dev I've been getting tweeted these at me I almost never even check kicker and punter except for in my actual franchise series. But also, when I go to the final draft and I, I sort by overall, I almost never see a punter at the top of the draft anyway. But I've been getting tweeted at them, or tweeted them at me, and I think we just found one. Best punter on YouTube, it was only a matter of time. So I think we crushed it, and we already traded the player we had to trade at the start of the league year. And I think we did really well. Oh my goodness. So Eddie Dunn's an 80. Could have been better, but an 80 still pretty good. He's going to be an immediate starting option for us. And he does have 99 juke move. You like how A juke move is 99 and A spin move is 83 playing up one. Doesn't really have any traits. 
But yeah, really, really good draft choice. 80 overall. The safety, Reggie Randolph, is an 81. 94 speed, 83 zone, 90 hit power. Really low block shed. But I think right up there for the best safety I've probably ever seen in the draft. Kasim Bowes is 73. Kerry Franks is a 77. Harris is 72. Vince Mulligan is a 74. Matthew Whitaker is a 73. And then the punter, Ben Rosenberg, is an 80. 99 kick power, 80 kick accuracy, and speed for some reason. And then we'll check out the entire draft. It feels like we absolutely knocked it out of the park with the number one player. Mellow Winners was pretty sick. The number two player, or I guess tied for number three with Eddie Dunn, both 80s. Another one, <laughs> there was a good defensive tackle, Jaquan Johnson in the second. Gerard, or Gerard was a 77. He only has normal dev though. Does look really good. I would have been happy with it. But, you know, low dev trait. Never really want to see those, even if you can overcome them pretty easily. Packers seem like they did pretty well, too. But, man, I feel like we just got so much better. Start of this next year, we're actually going to be trading our first round pick. Projected number one overall and a second in 2027. Greg Gaines, Patrick McCarry for Tremaine Edmonds, Damone Clark, and Chase Young. I feel like we got a really, really good return for this. Didn't get... A first rounder this year but that's okay because our team got a lot better personnel wise and we can do without our own first round pick when we have other teams first rounders so our defensive line gets better our linebacking core gets significantly better and hopefully that means the team gets better so this is the team you guys are pretty familiar with it by now although some changes were made so a fresh look at it is not the worst idea. Of course, we already traded Laramie Tunsil at the start of the new league year in the offseason at the draft. So that's done. Now it's about what can this team actually develop into? What can they actually become? I think we're in a good spot. Anthony Richardson taking a step is going to be critical to our success. Working on re-signing players right now. Chase Young's back, but Kayvon Thibodeau, Bobby Okereke being a little bit more difficult and... Some of these players, I'm like, do we really extend them super long term? Because we're going to have to trade them if they're the highest overall player on the team. Jalen Waddle should be back, but might be somebody that we're forced to trade unless T. Higgins catches up to him in overall. It's very close because then we would have a choice, I guess. So do we really want to give him a massive contract? Well, if we don't, he's just not going to sign. So that might be another franchise tag situation, but I'm not even sure if he's going to be the highest overall player. It might be Ryan Ramchek who we are forced to trade. Let's extend Jalen Carter. And we are overpaying for players right now, but that's what we have to do if we want to keep them around. Thibodeau is back. Okereke is not. And I still think T. Higgins is going to be a franchise tag. Wait and see. So here in the draft, C.J. James is a generational player. A catch in traffic, catching release, B deep route running. Great to elite for a lot of these ratings here. And then the core attributes are really good as well. A lot of A's, a lot of B's. Route running is all going to be very, very good. He's a generational receiver at 6'6", 233. And then there was another linebacker I saw, edge rusher. Jalen Bush out of Auburn that looks quite good. 6'2", 245, only 21 years old. A pursuit, A tackle. Good to great speed. A finesse moves, A pursuit, A awareness, A tackle. Should be pretty good as well. Now, do we need an edge rusher? Not necessarily, but you got to keep in mind, when we are trading our best player every year, we are constantly going to need to get, you know, players at positions we already seem to have. So we actually did make the playoffs. Snuck in at 10-7, and 7, but won our division. Still have to play the Giants in the wild card. And uh, I actually was pretty surprised to the team. Both Mulligan and Bo have superstar development. The running back only is star, and I have not seen the defense yet. Show me X-Factor safety. Superstar for Reggie Randolph, and then Frank's the top five corner. Let me move back to free safety, only has star. But I'm not complaining. I think this was actually very, very nice for us. I thought the safety would have a really good dev trade. I thought the running back would, though, as well. Just star. But the fact that we have two offensive linemen with superstar development is fantastic. Anthony Richardson with a much better season, still had a lot of turnovers, 19 interceptions, but 30 touchdowns near 4,000 yards passing. Eddie Dunn, pretty much done nothing. He needed to be better, only 3.8 yards per carry. As his overall goes up, he's going to be more productive. There's just like a barrier of entry to being 
productive at all in Madden simulation as a running back. You got to be like a 90 overall for it to happen most of the time. And then receiving Jalen Waddle with a great year. T. Higgins wasn't too bad either. Didn't really get Will Disley involved too much as you'd expect. Tremaine Edmonds, plenty of tackles. 13 for loss for Jalen Carter. And we actually did get after the QB. Chase Young, 16 and a half sacks, 10 and a half for Thibodeau. And then five picks for Okereke, four for JC Horn. Now, the big problem here is that Chase Young, despite having a great season, might not make it another year. He might end up being the highest overall player we have. So we'll see. Although right now, I think it's going to be Ramchek or Waddle. We'll have to see. Right now, Jalen Waddle is a 93. His true overall, though, is a 91. What's Ryan Ramchek? He's just a 90. Ah, they're so close. We need we need a dev trait upgrade for Ramchek so he de uh, develops faster. It's a shame that just doesn't happen. What's T. Higgins? He a 90? Oh, he's a 91. Interesting. Wild card round of the playoffs. We are out. Going 10 and 7 and getting first rounded by the Giants. But a good season nonetheless. We made the playoffs. We're on schedule now. This rebuild is really coming along. Anthony Richardson is developing, and we have to get ready to trade our best player. That part, I'm not excited about. Patrick Mahomes with another MVP. Don't see any Lions in there. Aaron Donald with Super Bowl MVP with the Cowboys as they beat the Raiders 24-17. Cowboys playbook, man. They're always going to find a way. We have $105 million to potentially re-sign players. T. Higgins, Bobby Okereke. Yeah, it's going to be a franchise tag, almost certainly for T. Higgins. Bobby Okereke now has interest in re-signing. I don't think I need to give him a ton of money. He's 29. He's regressing. I'm thinking a two-year deal to keep him around, and that's exactly what we do. And then T. Higgins. Yeah, it's, it's a franchise tag. I'll offer him one year, like not a lot of money, or two years, and then we'll just franchise tag him. So he is back. One year, 20 mil. That's pretty nice. Von Miller in free agency, but there's not a lot here. I'll look to see if we need to fill any gaps on the team, but probably not going to do much. Will Disley up to star dev. I'd probably rather trade T. Higgins over Jalen Waddle, but I'm going to have to trade Waddle the next year anyway. JC Horn up to superstar dev. Don't notice any other upgrades. We got to get in position for CJ James. We have to. And you know what? I see very few like initial names. You know what I mean? Like CJ, TJ... JJ, OJ, Simpson, the juice is loose. You don't really see a whole lot of those. But uh, generational type receiver at the top of the draft does have one. We just have to see like which player makes the most sense for our team and what it'll actually cost to move all the way up to number one. You just, you can't miss out on a player like CJ James is kind of what it comes down to. Especially considering that we're going to have to trade probably at least T. Higgins, maybe Jalen Waddell, or vice versa, or both eventually. All right, if we want this player, we got to move up. Currently, we're at 13. And if you check out the draft board, here's where things are expected to go down. C.J. James at one. Darren or Deron Kinney from VT is supposed to go inside the top five at three. And then the edge rusher down the board that I like quite a bit in... Did I pass him? I think I did. What's his name here? Jalen Bush. He's up nine spots. Supposed to go at 11. Yeah, so... You're not getting as many steals in this one as we did in the last one. We're going to have to be aggressive with our trade-ups if we want things to happen. And in order to move up for number one, it is not cheap. I imagine this is going to cost a lot. And they need a receiver. That actually could work out pretty well because we need to potentially trade a receiver. And when you look at our team... We have two 91 overall players. We have to trade one of them. I'm going to trade T. Higgins. Five years left on the deal as opposed to one for T. Higgins. But I'll have to trade Jalen Waddle next year if I don't get a higher overall. So it's it's going to be creating another problem for us. And this is it's going to cost a lot to move up. Okay, T. Higgins, two first round picks. One this year, one next year. A two this year, a four and a five in 2027 gets us this 2025 number one overall and we have now traded our best player t higgins in order to draft this generational receiver cj james of ole miss 
I mean, he's got elite acceleration, elite jumping, elite speed, elite strength. Ran 4.26 at his pro day, which is incredible in its own right. And then you factor in that he's 233 pounds and 6.6. He will be a generational player, 100% guaranteed superstar X Factor. 96 speed, 99 jumping, 89 change of direction, which is insane at that height and weight. 90 agility, 96 acceleration. He is insane. Nico Collins in a first gets us number nine in the draft. And that's where we're going to take that edge rusher. Jalen Bush from Auburn looks really good. Block shedding might end up being pretty low, but looks pretty good. Has hidden dev, not the fastest, but decent acceleration for sure. Yeah, pretty good. Well, we have some good depth kind of all over the place, but the crown jewels of the class, or maybe even just one, but Jalen Bush is the 76. That's quite good. He'll probably be a starter for us eventually. And then... CJ James is an 84 overall, pretty much guaranteed superstar X Factor. Route running's pretty good, catching is awesome. 90 release, he's a beast. 2025 now, it is the next day as I record this. These videos always take so long to record. I always underestimate it, even though I've been doing these for years. I don't know why, but we traded T Higgins, so that part of this is done. Don't need to trade anybody else this year, although we, we might. The offensive line looks really nice. Just gotta develop some of these guys a bit more. And then defensively, we're also looking quite good. Tremaine Edmonds right now is, I think, the leading candidate to be moved. I think he's the highest overall player we have at a 90. Ryan Ramchek might be, no, he's an 89. Waddle's a 91. So right now, we would have to trade Jalen Waddle next season. So do we go out and try to get somebody better than Jalen Waddle, at least a higher overall? Says we still need a quarterback. I kind of question that. We have a first round pick. Well, we have all our first round picks intact, but if we're going to be good, would it make sense to move one of those? What can we get for our first round pick? I I'm thinking we could probably get something pretty good, although the offers are not fantastic. A superstar X Factor tight end is actually really interesting. Only 24 years old as well. What could we get you for? I mean, I don't want Will Disley. I'll tell you that much for free. So if we can get something going here, whether it's, you know, a third round pick or or two of them, I'd like to hold on to my firsts. And I, I might actually be able to. They're kind of undervaluing Corey Paulson quite a bit. And it's going to be Will Disley and two third round picks for Corey Paulson. Now, he is only a 76 overall, so I guess that's why his value wouldn't be too high. But he's only 24 years old, and he's also a superstar X-Factor, the highest development trait you can get. So, pretty nice upgrade to our offense overall. I know he's a slightly lower overall, but long-term, that's absolutely better. And then I'm going to play CJ James over Drake London, and defensively... I think everything's going to stay the same. Bush, who we drafted, I, I still feel good about this draft pick, but obviously he's not going to play a whole ton as a rookie. That's for sure. Five and two at the midseason mark here. Exactly where we want to be, to be honest. We're an 88 overall team. We're really in a good spot. Now, we might end up making a trade. We have that first round pick that seems like it's going to only get less valuable as we go. So it might make sense to go and make a move. The strengths of the draft class, right tackle, corner, right end. I don't really know how much that applies to us. Like if there's a really good player, maybe we'll want to hang on to a, a pick or move up. A power back inside the top three. 5'10", 233. Not great athletically. F juke move. I mean, I'm not moved. Usually the power backs are not particularly good. Maybe this one is someone that's going to break the mold. I kind of doubt it, but I suppose it's at least possible. But I don't know that we are going to want our draft pick. I think it makes more sense to trade it for, I don't want to say like an aging superstar, but somebody that's a little bit older, a little bit easier to trade for. Okay, this linebacker looks sick. Aries Walter, 6'3", 242 out of Stanford. Block shedding could be good. Tackle zone coverage are good. Pretty good athletically. There's definitely something there with Aries Walters. If block shedding and pursuit end up being good, I guess. Tremaine Edmonds is here. He's up to a 91 overall. Mike Onwenu, Ryan Ramchek. Definitely not players we can let leave in free agency. So we're going to try and keep them. Tremaine Edmonds is somebody we might have to trade at some point. Let's do a three-year deal. Can I lower the bonus? 
and up the salary and still keep you interested? Please tell me I can. Bump up that bonus and you'll sign. Well, I don't really want to do that, but I might have to. Michael on Wenu. We'll just give him whatever he wants. That was a lot of money and he just doesn't want to sign it. Ryan Ramchek. Uh, it's, he, we're just going to have to pay him a lot. And if we have to trade him, which I don't think we're going to have to actually. We can just eat the cap penalty, but I don't think we're going to have to trade him. Three-year deal. Ryan Ramchek's back. And now the only two that we really need to worry about on Wenu and Edmonds, but not this week. All right, this is kind of a crazy trade, but we're going for it this year. Bobby Okereke, three first round picks, a second in 2028 and a third in 2028 for Miles Garrett of the Bears now with the fantasy draft and a second round pick in 2027. So we're trying to get a pick back, but we just traded for a 99 overall player. Miles Garrett is a monster. Okereke, wasn't going to be a part of the team really moving forward. So getting Miles Garrett, who is 29, is still going to be an incredible player at a 99 overall. He should be a monster on our defensive line. Now, what's the deal with getting a 99 overall player? Well, you're probably going to have to trade them, right? So that kind of sucks in the fact that he's not going to be on the team for more than this season. He is only a rental but if he wins us a Super Bowl this year, it's going to be worth it in spades. CJ James is, of course, a superstar X Factor. Not really a huge shock there. And I don't know why, I don't know why his thing isn't activating, but he is an X Factor. So hopefully at some point that registers. But yeah, we knew he was going to be an X Factor. You simply, and there it goes. You, you don't become an 84 overall or whatever it is out of the draft and not have superstar X Factor. He's just... We knew he was going to be insane. And now, what do we do with D-Tackle? Do we trade Kayvon Thibodeau? Try to really go for it this year? I think we're just going to stay where we are and have an awesome rotation of pass rushers. But getting Miles Garrett, I know it seems like not a huge need. Why did we go out and do that? I'm telling you, I think it was the right move because he makes us really, really, really good right now. Getting a 99 overall pass rusher is just an absolute difference maker. I think he takes us over the edge. That'd be my guess. Tremaine Edmonds is back on a massive five-year extension. And then on Wenu, we're just going to have to really overpay. I think if we bump it up a little bit, he's going to accept. And that's exactly what happens. Michael on Wenu is back. Don't really have any interest in anybody else here. Just depth. I mean, Chris Boswell is fine, but we can replace him in free agency for essentially nothing. So not really any point in re-signing him, in my opinion. We have a tandem breakout challenge for CJ James. I don't really know why. He's got superstar X Factor. I guess we can get XP for him, but that's it's not going to be that important. I, guess. I mean, I'll take the XP boost. Don't get me wrong if he happens to go off for 150 or whatever it is, but it's not really a necessity. So I don't know. Aries Waltz are starting to look a lot worse, by the way. So maybe a good thing we don't have a first round pick. Could have been fooled by him. And this might be somebody we need to get. Kenny, last name, Majika, 6'4", 344. Looks like he has really, really good attributes there. So I'm going to say at a build of 340 plus pounds on the offensive line is probably something we want to take note of and really look into adding him. We can get a second round pick. That really shouldn't be a problem. So if we want that player, we can make it a reality. I got scared for a second. I thought we collapsed, but no wild card because we get a first round buy. 13 and four. CJ James having a pretty good season. Had nine catches for 104 yards and two touchdowns in that week 18 game, which I don't know. I feel like this stuff is just kind of hidden in the news section. I wish it popped up on your home screen somewhere. I don't know. It just... They need to do a better job of making the league feel more alive more easily. As Anthony Richardson had a great season, still, you know, too many interceptions in my opinion, but I think the yards and the touchdowns kind of cancel it out. Over 4,700 yards, 45 touchdowns, 16 picks, rushing, still didn't really have much of a rushing attack at all. 3.7 on the ground for Eddie Dunn, who just needs to get to that 90 overall threshold. He's not really a power guy at all. And his ball carrier vision's bad. He's somebody who'd be a lot better to actually play with rather than let him go in, in simulation because 
The ball carrier vision is terrible, but everything else looks amazing. Carrying's not great either. Definitely good, but not really producing, but we are a vertical offense, as it would appear either, or anyway, so who cares if we can run the football when we can air it out? A little air raid action. Rip Mike Leach. Jalen Waddell over 1,400 yards receiving nine touchdowns. C.J. James' rookie goes for over 1,000 and has double-digit touchdowns. Drake London right at 1,000, nine touchdowns as well. Corey Paulson did a great year also. Really, really good numbers. And then Tremaine Edmonds led us in tackles by a mile. And Miles Garrett had a crazy year. 17 TFLs for Donald Harris. 15 for Thibodeau, 14 for Jalen Carter. Chase Young was actually okay as a rotational guy, but 23 and a half sacks. For Miles Garrett, nine and a half for Carter, eight and a half for Thibodeau, seven for Harris, and six interceptions for Kair Elam, four for Edmonds and J.C. Horn. This was a fantastic defense. Our offense was so good as well. We have a ton of momentum here as we approach these playoffs. 13 and four. I mean, that's exactly what you want to see. Go out and dominate. We have some upgrades as well. Keep in mind, we are going to have to trade Miles Garrett. He's definitely the highest overall player on the team. But I'll tell you this, he might help us win a Super Bowl. I know we had to trade a, quite a few first round picks in order to get him. And it seems crazy to do that when it's just for half a season. But a couple things that it, that, that enables us to do is, well, we keep the, the team together otherwise, and we could win a Super Bowl right now, which is the big thing. I wanted to win a Super Bowl and we went out to do it. And Ben Rosenberg, of course, superstar dev, generational punter i'd probably prefer a generational kicker but beggars can't be choosers so it is what it is also a thing we could do is just play chase young over Kayvon thibodeau right now probably makes a bit more sense to do that i don't know why i didn't even think of that but i should probably start chase young right now so i'm gonna go ahead and make that change divisional round of the playoffs i think we should be able to beat the division rival minnesota vikings and we do however the 87 overall, 91 overall offense, by the way, New Orleans Saints who went 11 and 6, could be a slightly different story. Who is on this Saints team? Lamar Jackson at a 99 overall, Quinton Nelson, T. Higgins, David Bakhtiari. I'm starting to see why their offense is so highly rated. Mike Evans is a Saint. Oh boy, that's fun. Brian Robinson. If you guys don't know, Mike Evans, Marshawn Lattimore, the Saints and the Bucks have a ton of beef. It's fun. But conference championship, we're going to jump in here to super sim mode. And we're going to see if we can knock him off. We do have an advantage in terms of overall. As you guys know, that is no guarantee whatsoever that we're going to end up winning this thing. 7-7 seven seven here. 14-7 Saints. Now into the second quarter. We tie things up at 14. Saints take the lead 17-14. We tie it right back up at 17 as the Saints retake the lead going into the second half. It's 20-24 or 24-24. We take the lead 31-24 and we have the football. And we'll jump in here on offense as Zach Charbonnet is the tailback. We'll give him the football. And uh, we'll see if we can just chew this clock a little bit. We have a touchdown lead. Just got to hold on. More Charbonnet. That's actually going to be a face mask. That will help the Saints here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to decline that. No, that's stupid. That's stupid. Uh, I was going to decline it if it was like third and two. It's third and four. So the reason why that's bad, it gives us 15 extra yards. Plus, it stops the clock which is obviously not what we want at this stage of the game. But we also don't want to, you know, give up possession. So them essentially guaranteeing us at least four more plays as opposed to a, a maximum or a minimum of two plays. A me well, if we didn't get the first, who knows? But we're just going to keep the ball, right? I think it makes more sense. Third and one. Charbonnet got there. That's the first down and a timeout made by the Saints. We just got to continue to run the ball. Our offensive line is killing it. Now, I'm looking around here. We only have our backups in, other than that. Here's our starting running back back. But if you look at it, we have no Jalen Waddle, no Drake London, no CJ James. Look at this. It's Merritt, Antoine Wesley, Cologne. Hey, we don't even have our tight end. 
is unbelievable. Now, do we run the ball here? We're not going to pick up the first, but we're going to take time off the clock. Which, at, at this point, that's what we want to do. Fourth and seven. We're going to make it a two-possession game with just over a minute to play. Fourth and 12, here is the kick, and the field goal is good. So it's going to be 34-24, 10-point lead. Just have to hold on. The Saints will need to score extremely quickly to have a chance. Of course, there's backups in here on defense as well. Keep him in bounds, please. That's going to keep the clock moving. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. It's progressive fatigue. It's completely trash. EA put it into the game. As We'll let Lamar take off as he throws it away. Terrible play. Uh, like, why would he not just take off there? It's stupid, but... Uh, EA puts progressive fatigue into the game for Madden. It doesn't work at all, because here we are in the playoffs with no starters on offense or defense. And uh, I don't know how you can put in a feature like that, not test it at all, and, and not have it work, because this is not a new issue. It was in the game last year. It's in the game this year. But we are moving on to the Super Bowl unless the Saints manage to get a 10-point touchdown here, which doesn't exist. We are going to play for the Lombardi Trophy here in a minute. And this is the ball game. Pass falls incomplete. Game over. We're headed to the championship. Lions-Dolphins Super Bowl? It's the Dante Culpepper Bowl. Are there any other Lions and Dolphins I can think of? I don't, I don't know, honestly. Can't remember. Lions, Dolphin. I mean, uh, yes, actually. Um, James Ahedabo? Did he get to the Dolphins? I think that he did. James Ahedabo did not. Why do I think he went to Miami? Progressive fatigue is off now. Hopefully it actually works. I don't know if there's some type of grace period where it takes a season to kick in. But uh, hopefully it works. Super Bowl action. We'll see if we got any dev trait upgrades. So far, we're looking at a pretty good team. CJ James at wide receiver one. No dev trait upgrades on offense. Anthony Richardson's playing up plus six, but didn't really improve. Bush has superstar dev. Kair, uh, Kair Elam went up to superstar. So did JC Horn if he didn't have it. Nothing major. But uh, some nice upgrades for the corners, at least. Patrick Mahomes, Fred Warner, Amon Ross St. Brown. It's a pretty good team. Pretty good top three, at least. Let's hope we have starters. Here we are, down 7-0 in the second quarter. Now 14-0 after a Dolphins touchdown, but we finally get our first points up on the board. Although the Dolphins are working on extending that lead. But we've actually taken the lead out of nowhere. It's 21-17. We need to stop here on defense. If we can somehow keep Mahomes out of the end zone, we're going to be looking good. And our backups are still in the game, so that's not great. Just complete backups. Trying to win a Super Bowl with backups should be the name of this video. As one of them gets to the quarterback, it's Alex Anzalone. I don't know if I said this out loud, but I thought it. I'm like, was Anzalone a dolphin? I think it's just Andrew Van Ginkle also is white with long blonde hair. I think Anzalone's just... Saints and Lions, right? But went to school at Florida. So maybe that's why it could be a, a factor there. But now we get to the QB again. Kayvon Thibodeau with half a sack. The Dolphins aren't trying a field goal here. That's brain dead. I mean, maybe it's, it's fourth and goal from the 27. I guess you have to. Maybe it's not brain dead, but like you're not taking the lead. You make it a one point game. I mean, you need to stop. It's not brain dead. I overreacted to that. But it's not great for them. There's a first down or two ends the game. Guaranteed. So they're they're really banking on the fact that their defense is going to get a stop. Well, maybe they know that we're relegated to just playing with backups. So maybe they know something. Well, I'll tell you, it doesn't help when you have a holding on first down and make it first and 20 and then run the ball for a yard. We're going to get screwed right here. That's what's happening. We're watching it in real time. The Mahomes narrative has to continue. And for good reason. He's really good. But it's insane, man. I mean, the refs are giving the Dolphins the win. I know we're going to run the ball on second and super long. It makes sense to me. Make him burn a timeout. 
Third and 12. Do we do the same thing? We don't have to. We can run Dagger here. Hit the dig to Merit. Or just check down to Cologne. That's also an option. We lobbed it up the, in there. Touch pass over the linebackers. That's a massive, massive first down conversion to move the chains. And now it just should be a first down to end it. It's a great throw from AR. And there goes Charbon A. Power, first down. That should be the game. Last play of the game. Here we go. We got some blockers. There's Charbonnet. And there is the win. 21-20 is your final. We have won a Super Bowl by trading our highest overall player every year. And we're going to try to do it again. One more year. Miles Garrett has to be traded. Let's try to go back to back. Season recap, of course, is us winning the Super Bowl. Anthony Richardson, Super Bowl MVP. CJ James was your offensive rookie of the year. And Trevor Lawrence wins MVP with the Chiefs. That makes sense. We got quite a few upgrades for winning the Super Bowl. That's nice. I will let the CPU handle it unless Anthony Richardson's in here, which he's not. So the CPU can just upgrade those guys. We are going to have to trade Miles Garrett here this offseason. So we'll just be ready for that. I don't think we're really going to have to re-sign anybody. I feel like we already took care of it. And with these contracts with the Fantasy Draft franchise... We have plenty of money. If there's somebody in free agency, you know, maybe we'll consider going after them. 11 players ready to negotiate, but we don't need to negotiate with any of them. They're all just not very good. We can get a better kicker than Chris Boswell. So we're in a pretty good spot right now. We're going to head to free agency. If there's anybody good, we're going to sign them. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Not really anybody worth signing. Give Kyle Juszczyk an offer. Leighton Van Der Esch could be good depth, but we don't really need him. It's not make or break if we can't sign him. Matt Gay, I think, would be an upgrade. Really nice kicker-punter duo. And we'll see if we can get any of those guys. Should be able to get Juszczyk for sure. LVE's in question, and then the kicker for sure. But we got all three. All right. NFL draft time. We have to trade Miles Garrett either now or uh, before we... Enter week one, I guess. So uh, probably best to do it now. I want to check out my focus players. Alan Stork at 80%. He looks like he's going to be a pretty good player. John Morgan, Adonis Barrett. We got some We got some decent names in here. Round one for Tyrone Weston. Really good looking tight end prospect. Just probably don't need him. Even though he looks amazing. We just don't need him. Ah, but he, he does look amazing though. What if he's generational? We already have an X-Factor tight end. Could we get two? Doesn't really make sense to do that, but I'm thinking about it. Brandon McMillan looks pretty good. Did I talk about, is the guard in this draft class? I think he is, right? Kind of forgot about him. That was like 340 or something. Well, so is this one, 6'6", 345. Oh, here he is. There are just a lot of 340-pound offensive guards in this class. Not at right guard, although one is 336, but there are three left guards at 344 pounds or more. I don't know. They, they probably all are going to be pretty good. Do we want any of them? Maybe. Okay, so what do we need? We could use an interior offensive lineman, I guess, to upgrade over Whitaker, but it's not super important. And then defensively, well, we don't really need a whole lot. We will have to trade Garrett, but Thibodeau is going to step right in. We have good corners. We have good safeties. It's really just whatever I want here is what it comes down to. All right, got to trade our highest overall player. It is Miles Garrett, as we knew. Waddle, Edmonds, Chase Young. I think we have a pretty good team outside of Miles Garrett, though. Scary Terry, not really an interest in that. Tyreek Hill, superstar center plus a first round pick next year. D doesn't really interest me a ton. Could get Trent McDuffie, really good player, and we get a first round pick. That might be the leader right now. Really good safety. Why would we do this? Oh, two first round picks, I guess, but eh. Not really super interested in that. I think I want Trent McDuffie here. A.J. Brown would be a great get, but we don't really need receiver. We are set on receiver. We're getting some great offers for receivers, but we just don't need them. So we're going to get Trent McDuffie. 
and a first round pick this year and a second round pick this year. So Miles Garrett is gone. Hate to see that. Oh, 20, 2027 is next year. Oh, okay. Should have double checked that. Thought we were a year ahead in the future. But corner now, we have three really good ones. Now we can trade Tyreek Stevenson. Okay, we're going to make a move here. It's going to be Charbonnet, Whitaker, a first, second, and a second next year for Christian Darisaw. Upgrade on the offensive line, a third next year. So not currently in line to make a high pick this year. It's just, it's tough to trade up a full year, I'm finding out. We're just going to simulate the draft. I am interested in seeing those left guard overalls at the end, but we've done what we can. We've set up a really good team. We have a couple of picks in this draft. The CPU can just take them. It doesn't really matter at this point. None of them will crack the starting lineup in any capacity. It didn't really do too well or too bad in the draft. We just didn't really have a lot of top end picks. And then I am interested in seeing, yeah, the running back's interesting. He's an 80 overall, led the class. 80 overall power back, decent speed, great trucking, stiff arm. Agility is great too, so is carrying. Definitely an interesting running back prospect. I certainly would not say generational by the game standards. Majika is a top three player in the class, by the way. 76 overall. The other guards look pretty good too. I'm kind of surprised to not see them in the same area. A lot of tackles. There's a center even at a 74 overall. Where are these other guards? I'm not seeing them at all. One's a 72. Was that even the guy I was looking at? I remember Majika because I remember the name. I don't see any other left guards. I, okay, I went past one. So Majika was a 76. Jeffries was a 73. Big difference. And then Logan was a 72. So we somehow figured out that he was the highest overall, or at least looked the most intriguing. Only normal dev on him, though. Still looks pretty good. Okay, so this is the team for the final year. Might need to hire an offensive coordinator that will actually let us use our superstar X-Factors. And we actually don't even have any on defense, funnily enough. We'll see if we can still win a Super Bowl without Miles Garrett. We've got a great team. We upgraded at corner. We look really good. Just got to go out there and make it happen. All right, we hired an offensive and defensive coordinator. So we will be able to get our X-Factors activated. And uh, we're going to get this thing underway. Final season, trying to go back-to-back. -back, trying to win two Super Bowls for the city of Detroit. Currently sitting at zero in real life. Looking for number two here in just a couple seasons. Mid-season mark check-in. We are five and two on our bye week. I feel like it's so rare to have your bye week at week eight in these rebuilds. But here we are. And we're going to upgrade the team again. I just don't want the CPU to upgrade. Oh, Field General is a new number one archetype. So that actually would have been fine either way. But uh, Anthony Richardson need his accuracy to improve. He's at an 84 overall, playing up to an 87. As long as we keep winning, that's going to get better and better and better and better. What is going on with Kayvon Thibodeau? He has fused with himself. There are two Kayvon Thibodeaus. I guess maybe the reason he's having a great season, there's there's two players to get to the QB. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. I'm not, like, mad about that glitch. I don't really care. It doesn't really do anything either way. But the progressive fatigue stuff is absolutely unacceptable. I noticed a lot of people, two players fused together in the upgrade screens, unacceptable. I can get over it. Although you'd like for it not to be there, obviously. But progressive fatigue, you just don't have my starters in in the playoffs? It's so dumb. Wow, just sneaking in. 10 and 7. And we are into the wild card. Not a great season for us. Kind of surprised. I guess Miles Garrett really is making a world of difference. We don't have him on the team anymore, but you know what I mean. Because we don't have him. Anthony Richardson had maybe his best overall season. Eddie Dunn put up a ton of numbers, but less than four yards per carry. Receiving, we had three receivers over 1,000 yards. A lot of touchdowns, 16 for Waddle. And then defensively... Kind of more of the same of what we've seen. Jalen Carter, 17 TFLs, 14 and a half sacks for Chase Young, 11 for Thibodeau, 7 and a half for Carter, and 6 for Donald Harris. No interceptions, really. Like, we had a few. Nobody had more than two, and only one or two players even had two. We'll see if we can beat the 49ers. We're a 93 overall team, and something tells me that we are on the verge of elimination. We do happen 
to get through the 49ers. But the Cowboys is not a team I want to see in the postseason, ever. Their playbooks are very strong, and they just always perform really, really well. So I'm not going to jump in. We've already won a Super Bowl. Anything else is the just, you know, the cherry on top of the Sunday. We do have a huge overall advantage. We'll see if it ends up mattering, and it does. Another win. Yet here are the 84 overall Falcons in the NFC Championship. Well, they're another team with great playbooks that simulate really, really well. Their offense is always pretty unbelievable. So this is not a team that we can take lightly, despite being just an 84 overall with an 81 overall defense. 88 offense, though. They're definitely capable of putting up points. If their defense plays well, we're going to be out of the playoffs. And we are out of the playoffs. <laughs> I knew it, man. It's only a matter of time. You can't make the Super Bowl with a 95 overall team. It would just it would make way too much sense, obviously. So the 84 overall Falcons eliminate us, a 95 overall team from playoff contention. Anthony Richardson up to superstar X Factor or superstar. Jalen Waddle up to superstar X Factor. And then defensively, Jalen Carter up to superstar X Factor. The whole team is just awesome looking but we unfortunately could not go back to back but that's trading our best highest overall player every season still managed to win a super bowl still managed to to build a 95 overall team subscribe if you're not subscribed already i know you're probably getting a lot of these in the recommended if you've seen the videos before but make sure you're subscribed it helps me out and you like the videos you don't want to miss any so thanks for watching hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one take it easy